World War II is a war on wheels, and in the 20th century, wheels turn on oil. By 1944, time and time again, both sides' advances on all fronts have at some point been hampered or even stopped when they ran out of fuel. It's a case of having to follow the old adage that when the mountain will not come to Muhammad, Muhammad will have to go to the mountain, and the mountains being far away and few between. When the Western Allies prepare their invasion of Western Europe, they are determined to change that dynamic and make the mountain come to them, or should I say, with them. I'm Spartacus Olson, and this is a World War II in Real Time special documentary. If you follow our weekly timeline, you'll know that right now Allied armor divisions are penetrating further and further into the European lowlands, then turning back to try another way to only once more change direction and try again. What you may have noticed is that compared to earlier advances in this war, they are conspicuously not running out of fuel. Given the size of the invasion, that is quite astonishing. In the first months alone, June, the Allied Expeditionary Force landed 148,000 vehicles in Normandy. Since then, every day, countless jeeps, trucks, lorries, tractors, earth movers, tanks, and other armored vehicles have continued to roll off the ramps of transport ships to replace or add to the gigantic Allied land armada. Not to mention thousands of generators, airplanes, water pumps, cranes, and other machinery that run on combustion motors. So far in the war, any forward motion of this sort has depended on bringing the fuel with them on other vehicles or relying on forward fuel dumps and depots. That's a Herculean task that none of the armies have mastered to the point of free mobility. You may have seen our coverage of how a few years back General George Patton grew frustrated by this impediment to speed and freedom during a large-scale military exercise in Texas, and simply had his men refill their tanks at U.S. gas stations. He was reprimanded and reminded that no such possibility would exist in the field, where occupied territory being liberated or enemy territory taken will most certainly have been rid of all petrol, diesel, and oil. Well, as it turns out, that reprimand may have been a bit off the mark, because by the time Patton's Third Army is advancing towards Germany in the summer and autumn of 1944, the Allies have developed an ingenious way to get all the fuel they need to come with them as they go. Now, as we were researching our 24-hour D-Day special, I came upon a little mini-newsreel cinema documentary from 1945 in Reuters' archives covering that story. We partner with Screen Ocean, a Reuters company, for our archive material. The film is a camp little thing, delivered in the typical 1940s upbeat, overdramatic tone, which for this story I found particularly fitting. And with that, I am proud to present Pluto, as documented by Goumont British News some 78 years ago. One of the greatest battles of the European war has been the battle for oil, that lifeblood of an army without which the invasion of Europe would never have been possible. We've heard of the thousand-mile pipeline system throughout Britain, but how was enough oil and petrol to be got across the channel to maintain the great invasion of 1944? The answer to this master problem is contained in one of the war's greatest stories of British ingenuity, Operation Pluto, P-L-U-T-O, standing for Pipeline Under the Ocean. The idea of a flexible pipeline on the basis of a submarine cable was first discussed in 1942 between Mr. Geoffrey Lloyd, Minister in Charge of the Petroleum Warfare Department, and Lord Louis Mountbatten, then Chief of Combined Operations. The result was an experimental pipeline made of lead with special flexible covering known as the haze. A trial length of the haze pipeline was then laid across the Bristol Channel by combined operations personnel. The experiment worked in spite of difficulties and petrol was delivered successfully from Swansea to North Devon and Cornwall. Another type of pipeline, the Hamel, was also being tried out. Engineering firms had a scheme for welding steel pipe into any given length with enough flexibility to enable it to be wound onto a large floating drum. 
Very soon, secret yards began to be filled with three-quarter mile lengths of this amazingly flexible steel pipe, all ready to be welded into continuous lengths of more than 30 miles. HMS Persephone was fitted with a huge drum for winding the pipeline direct from the yard. Thanks to the far-sightedness of the Premier, who ordered absolute priority for the work, the fantastic scheme had developed into a mighty plan. D-Day 1944, the invasion of France and the great test for Operation Pluto. The responsibility for laying the great lengths of pipe was borne by the Royal Navy, whose pipe-laying drums, known as HMS Conundrums, were soon engaged in laying the first petroleum supply line across the English Channel. Specially fitted barges were used to run the ends of the line ashore to be connected with a pumping station. In secret places along the English coast, these high pressure stations were constructed and camouflaged in the most unlikely buildings, such as pleasure grounds and seaside villas. armies pressed in land, Pluto lines were quickly established across the narrow part of the channel, carrying the bulk petroleum where it was most needed for the advance into Belgium and Holland. Helped by the flamethrowers of the Petroleum Warfare Department, Boulogne Harbour was captured and still more pipelines brought across the vital supplies of oil, which was soon flowing at the rate of a million gallons a day from the Mersey to the Rhine. The great operation was complete, and all along our vast fronts, the mechanized masses rolled forward to victory. By the achievement of Operation Pluto, British brains and drive had carried out a most brilliant and daring feat, without which war might still be raging over the continent of Europe. Pretty impressive, especially considering that this was only one of many unprecedented achievements that made Operation Overlord possible. If you haven't already, make sure to watch our 24-hour D-Day series. The playlist is right here. It's the members of the Time Ghost Army who keep our wheels rolling. Join us at timeghost.tv or patreon.com. Never forget.